and let us all that we can to build a better future. In the balance of it all, the fate of Nira, Nira Tandon, hangs. Her fate hangs out there. But I, I, who knows whether or not she will actually get this position within the Biden administration. But people are still talking we'll about something her. Something else that doesn't require yeah. the Senate to vote on it. Yeah. It just won't be as powerful. Yeah. But, you know, no matter what, she was a good attack dog for the Democrats, you know, constantly talking down to not only Republican lawmakers, but the progressives, activists, community organizers, independents, third party candidates, because uh, that's who near Tannen is. She just likes to attack people. And anyone that goes up against the Democratic establishment, well, um, you automatically become her enemy. So first, let's play uh, get our first video set up. Shout out to Case Study QB, who found this wonderful video. Uh, let's be sure to uh, get this all set up and uh, you guys and gals can enjoy uh, really how corporate media is going to be talking about the fate of Neera Tandon. A ruling in the Senate dealt a severe blow to Democrats who are pushing to raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour in the next COVID-19 relief package. Senate parliamentarian Elizabeth McDonough, the nonpartisan arbiter of Senate rules, issued guidance saying she didn't believe the effort complied with the guidelines of reconciliation. That is the fast track process that Democrats are using to pass the bill, bill with only Democratic votes if they have to. And despite the parliamentarian's decision, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said lawmakers in the House would not remove the provision before the vote, which is set for later today. And Neera Tandon's hopes of landing, uh, leading the Office of Management and Budget appear all but sunk. Senator Aww. Chuck Grassley oh, has confirmed no. to NBC News that he'll vote against her nomination if it makes it to the Senate floor. This as Republican, moderate Republican Lisa Murkowski seems to be leveraging her vote for concessions for her state. Texas Senator John Cornyn said Murkowski's looking for a deal. He said, quote, I think she figured out this would be a good time to have a conversation with the White House about some of the things that are important to her and important to her constituents. I haven't been privy to those conversations, so I don't know what exactly is being said, but I know she was interested in using this as an opportunity to have that conversation. For now, the White House is sticking by the president's pick. Here's Press Secretary Jen Psaki when she was pressed on Tandon's past Twitter remarks at yesterday's press briefing. When she tweeted that, quote, a vampire has more heart than Ted Cruz, <laughs> when she compared Senator McConnell to Voldemort, and when she called Senator Collins, quote, the worst, did those comments meet the president's standard of treating everyone with dignity and respect? When uh, Neera Tandon testified uh, just a few weeks ago, she apologized oh, for her past comments. Well, um, that's and the that case. she would be joining an administration where, as we've noted in here, there's an expectation of a high bar of civility uh, uh -huh. and engagement, civility. whether that's on social media earn. or in person. Yeah. And so we certainly expect uh, she would meet that bar. All right, joining us now, co founder of Punchbowl News, Anna Palmer. Okay, so while we get the second part of that video in that thread uh, set up, let's let's address something about Near Tandon and the Biden administration. Okay, Near Tandon deleted 1,000 tweets. Now, these tweets, I don't care. I mean, she said nasty things, as does everyone on Twitter. I mean, that's what it is. But it's she one big She especially made a sport of it. Yeah, she, she really made a sport of it because she was the Democrats' good attack dog. But now, here's what I find interesting. The Biden administration saying we want civility, it means... Don't say anything nasty or mean, but do it in private, but don't do it in social uh, on social media. So all this stuff about, oh, how, how great it is to have a president that's not tweeting or saying mean things. Well, let's look at the policies that he's implementing. He OK, the Biden administration, not only is it diverse and they're implementing neoliberal policies, but again, we're going to war. No $15 minimum wage increase, no stimulus check, no student debt cancellation, no nothing. So, in other words, yeah, Biden's not saying any mean things, but his policies are downright brutal. Yeah, I mean, it might, I mean, what's the difference between him and Trump? Biden isn't saying anything, but probably the reason why he's not saying anything is because he's senile. And near Tandon, she's all cool as being part of this administration because she's a good, loyal attack dog and mm -hmm. will do whatever she can to protect her fellow blue dog Democrats. So actually, I think I just I know Washington loves compromises. Just maybe not the one I'm going to offer, but I got an idea for a compromise. Ready? Let's hear it. If we will accept Neera Tandon's apology if if all college loan uh, holders can apologize away their debt. <laughs> I 
think that's only fair. <laughs> if apologies matter that if they're that easy to get, if they're and it's like, look, the people say, well, you signed when you were 18 and your brain wasn't fully developed, and you signed that document mm. for that money. You should have known better. Well, yeah. then, if that's the case, then Nira should have known better as an adult that being an attack dog on Twitter would have repercussions. So mm. if we're going to let bygones be bygones, let's make it happen. Exactly. Let's play that second video. Uh, Anna, good morning to you. Always great to see you. Um, I actually want to start our conversation with the COVID relief bill because this decision from the parliamentarian, a pretty significant one. Uh, we know that this bill can't get out of the House if they don't include before? the minimum wage. So they're going to move forward with that version. But <laughs> in some ways, this in saves it. Democrats uh, some headaches because now they don't have to try and, and get Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin on the same page on this minimum wage issue. Perhaps easier to bring everyone together. Um, does it speed passage potentially this decision? And then how are they going to grapple with the minimum wage issue in the future? March 14th is quickly approaching. So I actually do think for Chuck Schumer, it means less of a headache here because he can blame the parliamentarian for why this provision can't move forward in the Senate. To your point, this is not going to be over anytime soon. I think you're going to see minimum wage as one of the key issues that progressives push uh, in other legislation, either by itself or to try to tack on to other packages as they move forward. So, uh, Anna, do you get the sense that there is any nervousness about the size of the package among Senate Democrats uh, like Joe Manchin, Kristen Cinema, that could derail this? Or is How can we make this the sense fail? that the need is so, so great and that the bill is so popular that that's not a concern at this point? There's always concern among some of the moderates, like you mentioned, Joe Manchin, of course, around the size of this bill. It's $1.9 trillion, uh, which is a very large number for them to swallow. However, I have a hard time seeing them tank the president's number one priority, particularly when it is going to be bringing money to state and local, and it is going to help get more vaccine into people's arms. So I do think that's going to be a talking point now that this uh, minimum wage uh, issue has oh. kind of been settled. As I love the how they're settling the package, minimum wage. I just yeah. don't Monster, see the Joe Manchin saying, no, I can't vote for it. We're just yeah. going to have to start from square square one. Yeah, and it's um, so many people out there hurting and looking at that March 14th date on their calendars and, and wondering how they're going to pay their bills at, after that point. Well, Anna apparently Palmer, you can you just apologize much. for it and you're good. So this is this is exactly what we come to expect from mainstream media, from the Biden elected government. And it's it's hypocrisy and nothing much at all. It's, um, hey, again, I'm not joking. They're putting in more effort. The White House is putting in more effort to try and save near attendance, absolutely failed ascent uh, from guard dog to it, from attack dog to guard dog. Um, more so than they are caring about the minimum wage. Biden's been like for the longest time, and you remember what I would I was saying about how when we it didn't matter who won in Georgia, the outcome would still be the same. This is that example. We have a, we're at a spot where fifteen dollars right now is worth what the minimum wage was when it was first passed, and they can't even do that because eleven dollars. Ooh, it helps build a floor. It helps other companies do things and they keep, and it's crazy because it's like every time this happens, we have a couple of different things that are responded. But the biggest one that I hear is um, pundits on TV going, but what about the small businesses? How could they possibly afford it? First of all, small businesses pay more than large businesses on average for their workers. Let's just put that out there right now. Second, what they really mean is large businesses. They still want to say it because it's not as fun. But again, what are we doing here except decaying as the largest, uh, strongest empire ever? You know, I, what I find really disgusting is, again, because, I mean, again, this was a two-part video on how they connected the $15 minimum wage to also near Tandon and how this entire thing is seems to be on the cusp of trying to convince maybe conservative Democrats and Republicans to put near in. But one of the things that Biden and his administration will have to give up on is the $15 minimum wage increase. So the thing is... You know, no matter what happens, Biden and his team will compromise everything that they ran on. And even if they did, let's say let's say they adopted a few things from the task force, which we, which of course we know yeah. that they didn't. Um, 
They would have thrown that down the river already. The Democrats don't give a damn. The Biden administration doesn't give a damn. And the whole idea of the fact that right now everyone's still trying to make a big stink about near Tandon trying to go into, uh, you know, be part of the Biden administration, because if you don't support her, that makes you a racist or something like that. That is weak identity politics. Let's look at her actions. Let's look at her policies. She's against wage increasement. She's against social programs to help out working class families. She's she's all on board with being a pirate and taking Libya's oil. Uh, and uh, just you know, using it to pay off our deficit. She doesn't care. Yeah. And the Biden administration doesn't care. So while they are being very civil and nice to all those Biden apologists out there, why are you so quiet now? Where are all of you at? I mean, our lives are not getting better. The only difference between Biden and Trump is that Biden doesn't say mean tweets that's going to upset your brunch while you're digesting it. Too bad, so sad. I don't care. So going into 2024, and we will cover uh, into that much later into the show, uh, it's it's going to be a slaughter. And 2022 will be a sig- will be a, a very interesting case example of how the Democrats keep on screwing up. So AOC. Bernie Sanders and all those other progressives that are in Congress, all those larger progressive media outlets, everyone that's trying to go to bat for near Tandon. Is this the hill you want to die on? Probably so, because again, I mean, I don't see any fight for, uh, fighting in you guys. Uh, all I'm seeing is just nothing but compromise, compromise, compromise of the Democratic establishment. I mean, why are you in office in the first place? Why are you there in the first place at all if you're not going to even challenge Joe Biden? What does it look like to hold his feet to the fire? You don't be the funniest thing with Nirobs. I think we're sort of at the tail end of covering her anyway, because she's yeah. back to being irrelevant. Woohoo. Um, what are the chances that she's going to go back and say mean things on Twitter after promising that yeah. she would be civil? She'll, she'll, she'll go right back to it. And you want to want to know why? Because I think, uh, you know, Tulsi Gabbard said this on Joe Rogan's show and also on Megan Kelly's podcast as well, that Washington DC is nothing but a high school. It's a it's a high school playground. Uh, you got a, a bunch of people who haven't matured past high school, and they want to be petty. So this is if this is how our government's going to be run. Uh, convince me to vote Democrat because obviously they don't give a damn, and they're, and they're going to hold on to past grudges. Well then, hey, I can hold on to past grudges too. I'll withhold my vote to the Democratic Party and give it to third parties there There, just that simple if i'm not invited if you don't care about fighting for policies i care for if you're just going to keep on virtual signaling on twitter well then goodbye you you, you're not going to earn my vote and there are plenty other progressives that are feeling the same way too and i'm pretty sure there's a lot of progressives who were browbeaten into voting for biden are now really regretting yeah yeah and i bet you feel bad about it now this and is what was happens. It, was it worth it? No, I, was it worth it to be all high and mighty or joining a group of people that are all high and mighty who didn't care about you to begin with? And now that they're in power mm-hmm. and that the vote that they needed because Trump's a very bad man. Um, look what we're getting. 